how are you? Hi, everyone. Are we saying hello to the viewers? Eh? Yeah, let's say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy 2011. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us to your home. You're welcome. I'm glad Absolutely you're beautiful home. enjoying it. It's great to have you here. Thank you. So, tell us about you. What's been going on? What's tell, been going on? Tell us everything on? about Peter Everett's life. Um, well, um, oh, always, always changing. I mean, each and every day, as we know, it's a new and exciting lesson in life. And um, often daunting, really, you know, these lessons. And um, But lately, it's been a lot about trust with me. It's like just, you know, when it's time to move on, it's probably time to move on. And as, yeah. you, as I told you earlier, before this interview, that we, you know, that we, I, got news that they're not renewing my contract. They've actually got someone else to do Ready, Steady, Cook next year. Yeah. Someone um, new and fresh. So fresher than you, fresher than me, <laughs> fresh produce, oh, fresh nice. produce. So um, be kind to of them. Um, it's a tough old gig, a uh, great gig. I really, really enjoyed uh, the last five years, and we've done yeah. like I think seven hundred and fifty shows. For those of you that don't know, Pete Everett is from oh. Ready Steady Cook on Channel Ten. Yeah, um, two to three. Yeah, Monday to Friday. <laughs> Still promoting. Still always <laughs> promoting. Um, how many, so how many years were you doing that, did you say? Uh, five years. Five so years. I took over from another fellow who I never yeah. met. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, it, the last few years it's become a bit of a, a cult thing, you know, mm. and a saving grace for a lot of uh, mothers who are staying at home and Well, not just students. mothers, I mean, uni students, yeah. exactly. Myself, I've been on the show before. You have, you have. been a contestant, which you was have. a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it was great. And we get a lot of people, a lot of even theatre people who are getting up, struggling to get out of bed after a big night um, dancing or singing or acting. Uh, you know, so they get up and, um, and watch the show. So it's good. We get a variety of people, of course, who watch the show and who come in and view the show. Yeah. It's, it, and wonderful feedback. And, and the great thing for me about being on TV, what I've really enjoyed as an outlet, is that, you know, it's been fantastic that you can talk about things such as uh, from adoption, cancer, depression, um, and and just getting through life. You know, all the things that have been taboo over the years or when I was growing up. Yeah. And, you know, I went through a bout of depression. We had a young boy on the show recently who started this whole uh, thing with the, you know, the plastic fundraiser the rubber, with the rubber yeah, band yeah. saying, you know, don't, yeah, ring, ring, you know, beyond blue, which is great. And I think Jeff Kennett was the big... Is the frontline guy yeah. for Beyond Blue, and um, so you know things like that. Child, apparently, I didn't know this till recently that teenage suicide in Australia, it, per capita, it's the greatest place in the world for it. Right. But why should it be? You know, what is this thing with children and mental health in this world, right. in this on this continent? Yeah. And there should be money that goes into caring for these kids. I mean, obviously, there's huge pressures out there for them. Of course so. So it's obviously something that's close to your heart. It, that is very close to my heart because I tell you, when I was 17, 18, my dad died um, from cancer when I was 14, 15. And it was very hard after I, you know, I was finishing off school and I was really lost and not really knowing what I wanted to do and I mm. missed him really. And, um, and it's like you always want... The father, the father to be him. there like where are you you know and I was very angry why he died I just didn't understand why he had to die mm. and uh, it's taken him many years to actually forgive him for dying it's very interesting that yeah. but um, you know I think the harsher you are on yourself the harsher you become exactly to right. others exactly. so it's been and again through the show and talking with all the contestants their exposure of themselves on that show, you know, it's the, it's been fantastic, you know, I've learned so much, it's been an incredible growth period working there, and everyone was so kind to me on and off the set, you know, Channel 10, all the staff, Southern staff, they're really passionate people. Mm. Um, um, in a way, like now I'm, I'm loving, I'm just starting to get me back again, because it was a very intense time when we film, we do three shows a day, uh, three days a week, but I'm telling you, you come home and you're in bed. You have no time for anyone. And I'm, you know, and you've got to be gracious to people and whatever. But in personal life, you have very little left, and can get a little bit lonely because you don't want to be around anyone else. You know, and you come quite short. 
and uh, in your temperament at times. And, you know, I, it's just a work mode thing. And um, so it's really nice to be a little gentler and easier on myself and others around me. Yeah. And, uh, but now it's about looking for a job like a lot of Australians. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of exactly. people are going through We've all been there. what we're what I'm going through now. Been, so yeah. you just don't know where where we're going to end up. And you know, again, you just got to have faith and surrender over almost to the universe, saying, "Well, where I'm meant to be." Exactly. So you hold no bitterness from that. You think you'll know, be led to something else that's appropriate exactly right. for me that's to exactly do. Exactly how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So anything in, yeah, specific <laughs> in store for next year? Oh, I don't know. I've had a, a lot of inquiries already about right. different things. I'm just not sure. I mean, in this industry, you know, I never get too excited about anything until that camera's until rolling well, and you're there, and then I'll be excited by it because <laughs> things can be taken away from you very quickly exactly. in life, and that's about, anyway, living the moment of appreciation of life. Yeah. So I've um, been embracing, I've been reading a lot. I went to uh, vi uh, visit friends in America recently, and I took all these books, you know, things like, um, you know, only Love is Real, Brian Weiss, who's a great man, and The Wisdom of Florence Chevelle Shin, who was an amazing woman who wrote a philosopher from the 30s, 20s, 30s. Amazing healer, great yeah. stories. What's your bookmark? What's that? Oh, it's, oh, this was a guide. I went to a, a thing and the lady said this was one of my guides. Right. So, I don't know, I hope you're all up there looking after me. <laughs> I'm sure Gorgeous they are. guide people. I'm sure but they are. no, so it's, it's good, like, and then of course, um, Janelle. I hope they see this. Look, Janelle, this is your new book. I, <laughs> and I said on the camera recently, buy the book. She's this, you know, she needs the money to pay that uh, hefty <laughs> land tax up there. So this, it is beautiful. I did the forward to this book. She looks for great her. on the cover. I know that's a lot of airbrush. What's it called? Family no. and weekend feasts. <laughs> <laughs> She'll shoot me. So that's great. And Maria Bernardis, who's a great mate, who's who just won a, um, a literary great family award. Table. For this, lovely. talking yeah. about all the great, and the boys up the road. I mean, you'll never get into him, um, Mark Jensen, into Red Lantern, which is oh, yeah. and the chefs that work there. He's one of the chefs and Pauline, when I was on the show. Yeah, that yeah. wrote for this book. Mark was with you. Oh, I had Mark, and my friend Megan had had um, um, memorable. Who oh, was yeah. it? Who was it? <laughs> Uh, Did you win? No, I can't remember. I lost. I lost. Oh, okay. I did lose. No one forgot the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But they're, they're great the chefs on the show, aren't they? They're, they're all great fun. Absolutely. High energy, a lot of fun. And so talented, two had it, one had it, not even yeah. had it, some of them. Who cares? They're great exactly. talent and can make. So, what can you make at home? Um, I do a lot of. Um, I, Janelle Bloom actually taught me how to do a really great flavour some curry and I, I go to Bali and uh, you know Indonesia, yeah. Thailand and that a bit. I've been there a few times and I've done the cooking schools, sometimes with Janelle actually. So we did some cooking schools and learned a lot from that. So I like to do that. Um, and I don't always remember the recipe but I improvise. I'm doing all right. Yeah. So you've had my That's, cooking. I've, I've been here many times. I'm all right. He's excellent. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, so and, uh, a dear friend of mine who's staying here at the moment, she just devoured the end of the lemon meringue pie. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't get any. No, you didn't get any. But I'll make a good lemon meringue pie. And Janelle Bloom's brownies are great. They're in the book. Ross? Who's that? Hello, Hello. darling. Here's your groceries. Got the groceries. Some fruit cake. So we're going to do that? Yeah, there you go. Are we going to do that? No, I've got to go. Why? Love you, you love to cook. I love you. I love Bye. you. Oh, she's a naughty girl. Thank you. I've got fruitcake on the stage. I'm doing my grandma always. You know, I have to tell you this quick story. I Every year I get my grandmother's cookbook that she's written in and I always, I open it and, you know, I, I could cry now. And you see, and because she's passed. And, and you see the writing, and I always get so teary because it brings up all those memories yeah. of the time that you felt sort of, you know, nurtured and protected. Yeah. And now we're like grown-ups in the real world I alone, like times, you know. Too. My it's grandmother like, is still with us, but yeah. not long to go, unfortunately. Oh. And you kind of, you, 
you become very sentimental with things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So her cookbook is the greatest thing I have. Her written word. So I always get a bit. Oh, you know, that's nice. So it takes me back to, you know, when I was a teenager, causing havoc yeah. for them, really, <laughs> giving them a very hard time. If I remember in those times. I've on that. But so I've got her. I'm making her ball fruit cake that she used to make when she was Lovely. alive. So I can't wait to see that. It's, and try it as well. Well, it's boiling. <laughs> it's not going to be cooked whilst you're here. <laughs> okay. But the fruit's soaking and boiling and a couple nice. of bottles of OP rum, I think. Nice. A couple. A couple. Nice. No, I'm making... It's a big batch. <laughs> yeah, right. Knock it off. I don't drink... I don't drink... Oh, look, I say I don't drink. We've got a <laughs> we couple, don't drink the couple of glasses of Zills in here. <laughs> oh, it's like the show. Um, and you've got water there. We've got water for... Hello, the, Fiji. Um, yeah. <laughs> Now I can smell some your fruit cake. Oh, the, What's happening in the kitchen? Well, actually, it should be cool by now. So you, you boil the fruit mix yeah, yeah. and then you let it cool. Yes. So you can smell it. It's beautiful, okay. isn't it? Can you smell that? Yeah, All the I clothes are mixed it. Do beautiful. you want it? Go, go I'll get, get it. it. Stay I'll here. I'll show you, everyone. I had to put it on something. Look at this. Now here. Just put my... Don't drop it. <laughs> no. Look. See, this is the... This look, as you can see, hold that. Hold wow, that wow, 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 I mean, wow. look, I'll show you. See, this is the mixture. It's so thick. So anyone who knows about boiled fruitcake, that's the sort of thing, you boil all the fruit together. It's a really quick and what cheap... What are the long things? Not cheap, easy way. I, uh, okay. coke, I put shredded coconut because I love it. But there's prunes and dates. I'll tell you what, this would get you going. <laughs> prunes and dates and sultanas oh. and currants. And um, I even put raza hanut. Who's that? Well, it's a herb. I think I love it. It's, I think in top of the shelf Arabic herb. I think it's called top of the shelf or something. But I like it in fruit cake. Can we try it? Yeah, yeah. Can we stop talking? It's still Can we just try, try it. it. <laughs> It'll get you going. As I oh, think. great. Is yeah. it really, really hot? Well, mmm. You could eat this like for breakfast or something. <laughs> <laughs> Put some muesli in it. <laughs> Put something and otherwise you'll be on the toilet all day. Oh my god. Mmm. It's good. Mmm. I prefer it like that than in a cake. Should we have some more? I'm not double dipping. Oh no. No. It's only you and I. I'm safe. Are we anymore? I haven't got any diseases. <laughs> Maybe just the edge, then we doesn't look. Okay. I'll use it from the back of the spoon. I'm making three Don't batches. Don't tell anyone. Three batches of these. Don't tell anyone that we've double dipped. So friend, I often give these to friends as Christmas, but I do little individual ones with icing on top. There's a little bit of both of us in there now. A bit of our DNA. Mm. Peter Irvin. What about... Lovely. Oh, I'm lovely I'm or the form. fruit cake? Uh, <laughs> both. <laughs> You're lovely too. And so are you. Thanks for watching the Christmas edition at home with me. At home me. with Peter Everett. Bye everybody. Bye. <laughs> Happy Christmas.